study stream. Perfect. Hello there. I'm EnviroBoy. This is my channel, and we are going to be doing some more writing, as always. I just announce it as if there's something new involved with it. <laughs> but there's not. We sit here and we write and we play video games. And that's what we do. And you know what? I don't know about everyone else, but I appreciate that consistency in my life. Something something reliable that I always know what's going to happen. There's a time for adventure. There's also a time and place for just knowing what to expect <laughs> at any given time. Which is something that I personally am a big fan of. So. Anywho, last time last time we were working on our uh, our dungeon of um, our our dungeon of players traveling through sort of the the mountainous hills to eventually reach um, uh, to reach uh, the little giant enclave of sorts uh, that they need to go to to get information for finding the first key um, and we had started working on that and we were largely just working on all of the um, on all of the basic introductory stuff for that. I guess I should say introductory, more like uh, foundational stuff. And there's one thing that I realized um, that we finished off last time working on uh, that when I was thinking about it later, I realized I missed something important. Um, so I'm just going to take a... I already corrected it, but I'm just going to explain it really quickly. So when I was doing my calculations for how... like how much... Uh, experience points worth of, of challenge to give uh, during any given combat within this dungeon I had done the calculation like I always as I always do it this is a level 2 dungeon so I did it based on the amount of experience required to go from level 2 to level 3 right because it's supposed to be four players while they're level 2 and so we want to give them enough experience to get through the level 2 dungeon and be level 3 on the other side is essentially how I do it um, how I like to structure my games is how my players enjoy to have the game structured so I just kind of go with it what I didn't do though what I failed to do um, and I wasn't thinking about this and it, and it will help explain a lot of things and it will help make a lot more sense in terms of the difficulty that I of, of the individual creatures and the different like the different challenge ratings of creatures that I choose for this region what I didn't do is I didn't consider the fact that it's more than one player going through getting that experience um, we're balancing it for five players, so essentially all of the values that we mathed out uh, yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday, all of the values that we mathed out yesterday uh, needed to be multiplied by five. Um, because as it was, we were setting the challenge as if one player was going through this dungeon at level through, at level two, which, um, I mean, I guess I could see two, two people, two bros just hanging out and you know, one of them's going on an adventure, and one of them is providing the adventure. Actually, now that I think about it, that sounds like it'd be really fun. It'd be a really fun, like, couples thing to do. You just, like, take turns on who's providing the adventure, and you guys just, like, go back and forth adventuring. It'd be kind of fun. Anyway, that's not how we're designing it. We're designing it to be, um, for a balanced, uh, all of my dungeons I balance for five players, because when I'm DMing, I... Like, I, I pretty much insist, there's always going to be potential exceptions and stuff like that, but I pretty much always insist on having, as part of the core group, between four and six players. I don't like the core group to be more than six players, just because for me and my comfort level, that gets too hard to balance everything, and I worry about people slipping through the cracks and not having a good time, and sessions taking too long for us to actually get through and make progress. So I personally always insist on no more than six but as the core group, I also insist on no fewer than uh, four players. If there are three players, like if, if there's ever a, a time when one or two players in a four player group can't show up, so we've only got like two or three people that are playing but they want to, that's fine. But as a core group, I always make sure there's at least four players. So that way there's enough stuff and it's easy enough for me to balance things. So I do that and then I design my dungeons for five people. So. Either it's just right, a little bit easier if they're all level 6, you know, or a little bit more difficult if they're all level 4, you know, and that's also why I try to provide other opportunities to get more experience. Um, so one, if players are going through and they don't kill everything, whatever, in a dungeon, then they're not 
like screwed for not leveling up and if there's six players obviously that amount of experience balanced for five players is going to be insufficient to level them all up so you add other dungeons and stuff and they get up there but anyway I'm kind of digressing from the original point the original point is I needed to multiply all of those experience points calculations by five um, to get us to where we needed to be um, so yeah so I've done that I took the time to do that last night just because it was on my mind and I didn't want to forget to do it like I did yesterday sorry my cats She's beginning her lunch hour spaz attack, so she's all over the place. Likely up in my face at some point in time. As is tradition. There she goes. <laughs> I gotta have a gunshot. So, we got that figured out, and now we need to actually start working on our dungeon a little bit more. We did start, we kind of mapped them out. Um kind of mapped it out and and I had started I'd kind of used this format where I was just leaving it as kind of an open air dungeon um, so it's gonna be kind of an interesting one it's gonna present some interesting challenges for us uh, in terms of making the dungeon um, it's gonna present the interesting challenge of of us having to figure out how to put things in here um, how to put things in the map and have it be not all immediately obvious to the players what all is there. Um, and I mean, really, you use the theater of the mind a little bit, and you can handle that pretty easily just by saying it's all up a lot of steep slopes and up a lot of like steep, like like hilly, mountainous areas. And so it's like the stone area is like the the known path, and the heavy rocks there are. Or the, the grassy area there is like the more challenging things. But actually, when I'm thinking about it, when I'm thinking about it, I almost want to reverse these two and have like the grassy areas be the more flat areas that they can go on and the stone areas being like the surrounding areas because that would make more sense, right? Hold on. We're, let's start a new one and let's just, let's just start something new and just experiment with it. I don't necessarily want to do it on the template we've already done a little bit of stuff on because if I decide to keep it that way, I want to have to redo everything. So if we go to our terrain brush, we want to go to mountain here. So, but if we do, if we turn this, if we turn that, like, yeah, if we did that as like rocky, and then hold on, what's this? We can do like gravel. Hold on, let me see something actually. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, see, I'm immediately liking this a little bit better for the aesthetic. This feels a lot more obvious that these are like platforms or plateaus on like a, a tighter area. And this also gives me an idea. Hold on. I've got a couple ideas. I got bear, bear with me here. Bear with me for a little bit. I've got a couple ideas here. Got some ideas on how to make this be a bit more obvious what kind of you know atmosphere we're going for here. So we do that and that goes to that goes off to the second level there. But I'm thinking actually what I want to do is I want to set up all of these so they look a bit more Because I, I want to try and create a sense of, like, these are different, like, tiers of stuff. So I kind of want them to be more closely packed, right, like this. And so we can, like, do that right there. One, one two, three, four, five, six. If we do that, six. And then we can do seven. Eight, nine, and then ten. So they start down there. And see now, I I kind of like this with them being a bit more closely packed together because I I'm trying to invoke a sense of vertical <laughs> on a completely flat bird's eye view map, which is extremely difficult. Um, very very difficult to to manage that. Um. 
That's your, oh, no, we don't want smooth blending. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's good. And, uh, hold on, I want to undo that a little bit, though, because now what I want to do is I want to, like, make these much more, like, clear, specific paths, right? So that it's, like, clear that these are kind of mountainous passes and stuff like that. And then we can kind of do, like, one that goes there. And we can do one that goes along there, like that. And actually, I wouldn't mind this being more of like a winding, right? Because it's almost like they have to kind of climb their way up back and forth over something. So we can do that, and then, like, that's the baseline path, and then part of the challenge for players is trying to decide how they want to approach things, because they can either follow the path as it is, like this, right? Or then, the, you know, they could do it that way, or they could try and trailblaze and make their own. So if we kind of make this one more of a linear process, and then they can, like, cheat their way up, you know, because we could, what we could do as sort of like a signal, we could add some of this gravel here. See, that doesn't make it too drastically different, but it does make it, like, different. If we do that in a couple places. We do that there, and maybe here, right? So there's like kind of that visual cue for players, but it doesn't give away too much of the idea that like, oh, hey, maybe you can, you know, sneak your way up and skip some portions of this whole dungeon. You know, so we do stuff like that. It's nice and slow getting it there, but... See, I like this. I'm, I'm immediately liking this much better than the other one that we have. I think this is going to be much more functional for what I'm looking for, for what we want to try and achieve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like this look much better. This look is much better. So we're going to... Okay, yeah, close that other one. Um, yeah, so I'm actually... I'm going to be, I'm going to be brash about this. I'm just gonna go ahead and save right over that other one. Yep, we're just gonna save right over it. And we're gonna keep this one because I think this one's much more functional. This one's much more what I'm looking for here. Like this definitely has this a stronger, more mountainous appearance um, that's fitting with what I was trying to achieve with this. So it's like we've got a couple alternate paths here that players can try and trailblaze, and those can be our various like traps and stuff that are available. And we can even what we can even do also, let's see, is it gonna, yeah, it'll show it. Yeah, so we can like do stuff like this too, to kind of like cut off and make it look like there isn't a pass to get to a location. And so players will no matter what kind of have to do that. We can, I don't want to put it there necessarily yet. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we got our ten rooms there. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's how I want it to look. So. That's perfect. Let me go ahead and... Um, oh, that's, this is what I wanted. Um, text box on. Make this font size 22, just so it's not too big and distracting there. And then we can just go... Our rooms here, and again, it doesn't matter which room is numbered which one. I always just go along the top and just kind of like... Go, go like you would reading a book or something like that. One, one two, four, five. I promise I know what the numbers are in the order they go. I swear. It might not look like it, considering I did it wrong. But I know. I promise. I know my numbers. I went to first grade. Six. Seven. Eight. That's nine. And that one is ten. There we go. Yeah, I like this. I like this look much better. Um, and we're gonna say, um, um, we're gonna say, climb. Actually, no. We're just gonna say up. 
so that we know you that know, they're going up a level that's rather than down. Because that's usually what I'll do with the stairs too. Okay, like, yeah, you know, I always do better. my stairs like Pokemon style where it's like but, there's uh, just, you know, just writing like a discrete staircase and it's not like there's like, the, you know, if there's going to be a spiral staircase or multiple floors being handled by the same staircase, it's always like two of them next to each other and I'll have one labeled up and one labeled down just to make it clear. We'll do that the same with our pathway. Um, oh, I do need to really quickly grab our terrain brush, and I'm just going to fill this in a little bit more over here, because that's like the starting the point. Ideas. And we're just going to put right there, I'm going to say start, just so that way we know, players know where they're starting off, I know where to start them off, and all that kind of stuff. It's a little immersion breaking to have these types of notes in there, but, you know, we are playing a game. So <laughs> it's okay for everything to be kind of game mechanic e every now and then. Um, all right, so we'll do that. And now let's just go ahead and make our second level here. So we're going to go here, um, level settings, create a new one. Um, <clears throat> label is going to be um, upper level. Except... Like rename this one lower level. Might as well keep that sort of that sort of uh, that, that uh, oh, it's because it doesn't select that way. There we go. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Keep that. Keep that conceptual symmetry going on there. If one of them's upper level, and the other one naturally has to be lower level. It's it's only it's only obvious. Uh, terrain brush. We want to enable that. Um, again, we're gonna train train this or turn this into the rocky terrain and this one is going to be the gravel so limestone here oh, sorry, go away. Go away. all right so we're going to do the same thing and again i want to like have the larger one up be up here like i'm trying to sort of like inadvertently not inadvertently i'm, I'm very i'm very vert, vert. <laughs> i'm very intentionally making it so that the bigger ones are like higher up um, to try and also add that sense of like oh these ones are larger and closer um, but it doesn't have to be like that 100% the, the important thing is again to kind of keep them almost like not not really stacked that's not the word but like very adjacent to each other so that way it looks like steep climbing and stuff uh, between all the different levels is the goal that we're trying to achieve here. So like we'll have that one kind of go in like that Oops. Uh, Actually, I don't like that There we go, that's better Do That put one like right over here. Whoops Got a little too close there Gives us six Seven, eight, uh, let's see here, come on, there we go, nine, and then we're starting back in this corner again, and what I'm going to do here, so this is our start here, that and so I'm just going to expand some of these just a little bit here expand that one and then just to make things kind of interesting check it we can go like that and give this one kind of a cooler more more interesting shape so we can do that and then actually we can kind of make this one a bit more windy the way things are set up here so let's go ahead and narrow this again um, do like one pathway that goes there and then this one will connect like right there. I'm gonna have that one connect there, there. Go here, over to there, over there. Go like that, and then like that. So we do that. So there, again, we've got kind of like a zigzaggy pattern there. Um, which it, normally I try to have more obvious interlocking, but like I say, I, I like the idea of this one having like non-obvious pathways like this that end up being kind of like 
options to bypass parts of the of the of the dungeon, so to speak. Yeah, see, like we can do one right there, and run, run right there. So yeah, like we do stuff like that. Actually, can I do that just to hide some of that gravel a little bit there? There we go. There we go. So yeah, so we got got some options there, and so players can kind of dodge a little bit there. If they miss that one, they can go there and dodge there, and then go up there. That gives them some options. Um, <laughs> you're goddamn right, Gregor. Goddamn right. There's there's giants in them hills. <laughs> faux, faux show. And luckily for players, they'll be at least somewhat friendly. I guess that actually depends on the players. Like, the giants' baseline behavior isn't going to be super aggressive. Hi, kitty. <laughs> Just gonna stand here and smack me in the face with a tail. You can see your tail in the corner of the camera. <laughs> I know, hi honey, did you want to be on the lap, or are you wanting to bother me? Because on the lap doesn't bother me, I think that's adorable and comforting, but when you're just on the countertop, or on the desktop, smacking me with your tail and everything. <laughs> there we go. There we go, Get, okay, no, no, we don't, we don't want to stay there. Like I say, we're on our, we're, we're doing our afternoon spaz attack here. So, she's a little... All over the place at the moment. <laughs> you need to make up your mind about where you're going. Cat. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, distractions. Distractions in the workplace. <laughs> this isn't the workplace. I'm not gonna pay for this. I do this for fun. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. So that gives us a good. That gives us a really good template. Oh yeah, I do need to number this. Um, all the rooms here so again just doesn't matter which room is numbered what two three it's all just for matching descriptions and details in one notes with what we see on the screen here eight nine and I guess we'll put it right there ten there we go so there's that and then you want to put one label here that says down. Uh, and then up here, we're going to go ahead and say uh, tribe. Because that's like that's where the giant tribe is. That's the, that, that's the end of the dungeon. That's it. That's all there is. <laughs> so let's see here. Actually, I'm gonna, what I'm going to say is rather than say tribe, I'm going to say to the tribe. Because up here is actually going to be a griffin nest that players are going to have to somehow deal with. Um, is sort of the plan. So that's one thing about this, uh, the way this dungeon, because of how linear this dungeon is, because this dungeon is meant to be a linear one. Whoops, hold up. Um, not right now, I apologize. Getting a phone call and I'm busy, which actually also that brought me to attention that there's something else I need to do really quickly. All right. All right, all right, all right. We're good to go. Sorry. Sorry about that momentary distraction. Uh, yeah, so up here is actually going to be like a griffin nest that they have to do. And then, like, when they get cat, if you keep pressing buttons, if you keep pressing buttons with your tail, you're going to have to move. Turd. <laughs> this cat. Very difficult. <laughs> um... What was I saying? Oh yeah, there's gonna be the griffin nest up here. That's what they're gonna have to deal with. Um, this uh, dungeon in general is going to be a lot more linear um, than what I normally do. Cause normally with dungeons, it's like the end of it is like a dead end and then they have to make their way out of a dungeon. But this one, we're handling it as a dungeon, right? The, the dungeon is a pathway. So because they're getting to the other side, we kind of want to, if we want them to experience at least some degree of challenge and stuff, we kind of have to railroad them a bit. Which is A-OK, -okay, honestly. Um, so, let's see here. Um, oh, you know what, there's one other thing that I need to do here. Um, 
cat, stop hitting the escape key with your tail. Would you knock it off? <laughs> you have to be doing it on purpose at this point. <laughs> so the other thing that I always do is I've started getting in the habit of I just sort of like centralize one light source because these are interactive uh, maps that I make uh, to be used with virtual tabletops. Um, I always I add one like, like it has interactive light that, that's where I was going with that description it has interactive light things so that way it can impact if players have like dark vision and stuff like that but I've no, I've run into a problem a lot of times where if you don't provide a light source because it'll still it'll take into account what they can see even if they know the layout of a room it'll take into account what they can see based on whether they're supposed to be dark light or anything like that but what I've the the issue I've run into is that by not providing like not putting in those light sources especially if it's indoor but also if we set it to night players won't be able to have their map sort of remain open and visible to them and this is just on foundry it's just an issue I've noticed and so I've started doing just add a single light source to each room just so that way the room still stays like visible as part of their map when they leave it as opposed to it just turning pitch black um, which is a very frustrating thing for players because when they're trying to strategize it's like their characters would have a sense of object permanence and be able to uh, <laughs> and be able to um, remember what a room is laid out to look like <laughs> and so they, they like having that um, that, that, that layout still there so if you put these little light sources there just like that it makes sure that even when they leave an area they can still see now the challenge with this is because this one's an open air one and it doesn't have any rooms how is this gonna change it are they gonna like see are their character tokens gonna see this all as like twinkling lanterns in every single stage of the hill and I don't know it, it, it kind of is irrelevant because as long as people are willing to use their imagination and not metagame um, and if I just make sure I don't put any traps or like any icons that indicate a trap or an enemy actually on the map until they get to the room, it's not like they can see anything. But at any rate, at any rate, I just I that's something that I've been doing lately, um, and I try to remember to always do it. So, so there's our map, and the next thing to do here is we need to map uh, map out. We need to try and assign different challenges and rewards um, to each room here because I try to make sure each each room well 90% of rooms will have a challenge and 90% of rooms will have some sort of reward there's always one room that has no reward and one room that is just like mercifully safe um, and so but we but I like to generally do those um, randomly which I will be doing with dice here because it's D&D what else would I do it with <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, so we'll do it that way. There's a couple of them that are going to have to be certain things. Um, you know, or, or some things are going to have to come, like, happen in a certain order. And so I may have to, um, I may have to overrule what the dice say for some of them. Uh, okay, I'm going to randomly pick out one of the... Well, actually, the dice doesn't matter because we'll also... Set it to the side. Now, one thing I need to do here is I need to set up myself. I always do like a little sticky note for myself with all of this, so that way I can check off the rooms that I've already mapped out and not have to worry about. Did I already put that one on there? Um, so let's go back to our one note here. And so now in our dangers we have okay. So so for each dungeon level or yeah each set of set of rooms we're gonna end up having. Like these, this is the list of all of the things here. So just for my own notes here, I'm putting down um, got easy combat, easy, easy, have two mediums, and for our first set, we're gonna have two hard battles. Uh, da, 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 da. Get that all written out there. Uh, so we got those seven there. Uh, we need to include a trap, a puzzle, and a safe room as well. Trap, puzzle, and then safe room. 
and then for our rewards there's going to be the the quote-unquote compass which is so like I I like to do my uh, one of the ways I like to do dungeons and the way I've sort of committed for this campaign is I like to structure them off of like the Legend of Zelda model where it's like there's a map and then a compass which will mark things on the map for you as well as like small keys to unlock basic doors and a boss key to unlock the final door um, I like to include those types of things in my dungeons um, just because like again it's a little game mechanic -y, but we are playing a game so you know you can do that and and I use those terms really loosely too like in this one I had thought that the idea that I have is the locked doors at different points in this dungeon are going to be places just parts of the pathway that are like challenging to like that require actual climbing or something along those lines and so that the key is going to be climbing gear like a, a rope with a grappling hook or something like that is is the idea that I have for it so that way it's like thematic and it's not explicitly like oh there's just a random ass door sitting out in the open on the mountains because obviously that wouldn't make any sense but you do stuff like that and the other thing that's fun about it too is it means that players can find ways around it in a lot of situations without having to find a key just the same as how if they were in an actual dungeon and they came upon a locked door they could try to lock pick it right if they find the key then they don't need to worry about it um, but if they if they haven't found the key then they can try and lock pick if they don't want to search for a key so I, that's how I like to structure them that's how I'm doing it for this one it's not the only way that I structure dungeons, but I don't know. It just seems like a fun way to do it for this campaign. So I've, I've done it. We're committing to it, at least for this one. <laughs> so we got to put the compass there. We got to put a map in there somewhere. You have to do two keys. Uh, we need to have the boss key. Uh, we need to have... What else do we need to have? Uh, oh yeah, an enchantment token, um, which is a homebrew thing that I use uh, with my players. It's something I've worked with them on, so that way they can sort of get creative with enchanting their own weapons and stuff. I can go into detail with that if people want, but I feel like I explained that one a lot. Um, and I feel like I explained it recently, so if everyone watching has heard it, I won't make you suffer through it right now. <laughs> um, of course, there's always the chance that they'll just find a big pile of money. Who doesn't love money? Um, let's see here, and we'll do an item. I always include some sort of weapon or armor that's thematic. Um, uh, we one room will have uh, health items and buffs, uh, and then one room is just going to be empty because we can't always give our players a million things. Sometimes they have to just face adversity, which includes not finding treasure sometimes. <laughs> So that's, that's all the stuff that's going to go in there. Um, now there's a couple rooms that will have to have um, specific things. Um, um, namely, in terms of um, establishing what rewards are going to be there. So because we're doing this one pretty linearly, um, you know, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to like half and half it here. Um, make it a bit easier to work with here and think and just to, just to make it easier to see um, hey okay listen here you, listen here um, there we go okay this will just make it easier for us to see what rooms are gonna be what and so around here so the big thing is we just need to make sure that four doesn't have, four can't have the boss key. Four needs to be accessible only by the boss key. And I like the way I like to do boss keys in a lot of ways with mine is again using the term key very loosely. I like to have it if I can, almost be like an additional like something that gets added to the the standard key. Right, that is used in conjunction with the standard key. Um, to you know, so the the idea being that way, it's like players will need to get one of the keys. Like they can't 
always just lockpick their way through and it helps keep things thematic and stuff like that and it kind of turns the whole dungeon into a bit of a puzzle that they have to think about it just it adds a little bit of complexity there so what I'm thinking for the key like so so the standard key I'm thinking that would that's gonna be like I say like a grappling hook to help them climb and then maybe the the boss key is like I don't know like you know the, the crampons that you can put on your on your shoes or your boots to help you climb a little better so it's like maybe those two things combined are what help you because there's just going to be a flat out cliff to get up here that they need to get yeah they need to somehow climb up there and so they'll they'll kind of need all the help they can get and again it makes it th this in this situation it's kind of fun because it's uh it sets up a situation where um the players probably can uh, figure all of it out uh, without um, uh, without finding the keys, so to speak. You know, actually finding them, they can probably still overcome a lot of it. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Just get those set up there. Um, so they can still accomplish what they need to do in here without necessarily finding any of the keys. Um, and I think that's going to be a valuable and important aspect to this if we're going to add these potential alternate routes for them to take where they could just try and climb their way up. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I, I like that this dungeon is being set up to offer a lot of different options, some of them more obvious than others. Um, I, I really like that approach to dungeon making as well, where there's like different ways to find success in it because then players can really feel free to get creative. So let's see here. Um, I know, so generally speaking here, so I know we'll want to do like, in here, I usually also do like the, the keys, the standard keys will help access the map and the compass. And then the boss key helps uh, access the, the last room in the area. And so you always want, so for this one, for it being linear, we probably want to do something like key, map, key, compass, boss key, and then needs the boss key, something like that. Um, so we'll, we'll let randomness kind of handle it, at least to start, but we'll modify if we need to. So we're going to start with a D10 because we've got 10 options for both of them. So... We're gonna use the the fancy blue and gold dice. Can, will the camera focus on that? Look at that! Look how pretty that dice is. It's so pretty. I love that dice. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let me stop bragging about my uh, about my dice here. All right, so five, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be for room number one. So it has been. Uh, uh, so room one has been decreed by the dice that it will have a uh, medium battle and for the reward well, and we're gonna just check that off to know that I've already done that on this level and then it's going to have a key as the reward which actually works out well that's early enough that that can probably work out just fine I don't know that we'll need to edit that one so I think that's good I mean, the other thing, too, is we can have the two keys um, be, like, we can have it so that players get both keys, and then later there'll be, like, the compass and the, uh, the compass and the, uh, um, the map. So, okay, so that's what's in room number one. Uh, da -da -da, oops, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Just making sure I'm accurately doing this stuff. All right, so we'll stick with the ten because we've still got nine options. Alright, so the next room, so room number two has been decreed. It will have a hard battle. Uh, so we'll just put hard battle there. And then for our reward. Uh, let's see here. So for the reward here, um, that's going to end up being... Uh, okay, so it's given us the boss key there. Interesting. That might still work, actually. We can have the boss key be early. Um, it's not not the worst thing. It's not the worst option. Not the worst option. We can we can still sort of work with that. Oh wait, hold on. We need to change that to room number two here. 
Uh, room number three is going to have... Okay, so for our danger, I'm going to switch to a D8, just that way I don't accidentally have erroneous rolls. Uh, so seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to be a puzzle room. Uh, so we want to do puzzle for the danger. I have to think about what the puzzles are going to be here. That's going to be kind of a challenging one. I feel like the traps are going to... I feel like a trap is going to be just that... You know, there can be a bit of a rock slide or something, and the puzzle is going to be something along the lines of, like, you know, there's some sort of blocked op like blocked pathway option or something like that. They have to figure out how to get past. Real simple, not, like, not really a puzzle in the sense of, like, we're in a game of chess starting at this position. And it's like, it, you know, but, hey, you know, it's it's a, the puzzle is really meant to just be, Something that they have to kind of think their way past. They can't just fight their way past it. Is the idea behind the puzzles. So. So we've got the puzzle. And then for our reward. Uh, that's going to be. Ah, uh, it's going to be the empty room. Ha, <laughs> suckers. So there we go. So maybe the puzzle then. You can almost make that. Like maybe there's like a chest up there or something. Or there's like a. I don't know, because like if it's an empty room, usually the empty rooms... Oh, excuse me, I apologize. Um, usually the empty room in a dungeon is the one that I like to sort of describe to players as being one that could be fortified um, and used for like a long rest or something along those lines. That's usually what I like to do for those empty rooms. So we'll have to find some way we can maybe even include the puzzle to do that like maybe the puzzle maybe the puzzle is just that it's a a broken down like camp but if they manage to figure out how to reassemble everything they can establish themselves like a, a like an actual functional hut or something to hide in for the night that might be an option that's, that's something that we could think about um, at any rate all right room number four uh, I'll stick with the d8 because you still got seven options there so two that's gonna be an easy battle um, easy battle. Actually, wait, hold on a second. I need to check and make sure. Is this... Oh, wait, that's our final one. So that one actually isn't going to have the... Well, you know what? This one can have an easy battle. It doesn't have to be the one with the boss battle because there isn't actually a boss battle on this level. This is just to get to the next level. So an easy thing is just fine. Um, that's That's totally fine. Um, the other thing, though, for that danger, I'm going to just put in parentheses here. I'm going to put um, boss key needed um, just because it's the last one. So it's like to be able to earn their way past it, they'll have to figure it out. So I'm thinking I might get rid of this pathway and just make it so that, yeah, they have to like literally manage to climb up a cliff or something. Um, so we'll do that. And then for our reward here, I mean, the reward is kind of just being able to make it past, but... <laughs> the reward is going to be three, four, five, six. Oh, it's going to be the item. All right, so we'll put item there, knowing that it'll be like a weapon or a piece of armor or something like that that players can find and then decide who is going to take that home with them. All right, so that's room number four there. That's perfect. All right, and now on to room number five. And I'm going to swap to a D6 now. Swapping out which dice I'm using is really just to make sure I don't have to like re-roll because I've already checked so much stuff off of the list. Uh, so room five is um, the danger. There's going to be oh, this is going to be the this is going to be um, uh, another safe room. Oh, that's actually two. So it's like the empty room number three. That's like empty as in there's no reward. They're not necessarily that it's safe and fortifiable. So five is going to be their safe room. So I'll have to figure that out, but I don't know. We'll figure that out. We can play pretty fast and loose with it also. Like, I, I said it here not because everything has to be exactly as the formula states, but more so the formula makes sure that I sort of think about all of the different possibilities of what can be in a dungeon. So that way my dungeons don't become too bland or monotone. You know, there's always a lot of stuff going on in them for players to enjoy. Um, so the good news is that one's early on, so that'll be the... That'll be the room that has the map in it. 
which is kind of helpful. So in this one, I feel like the map, what it'll do is it'll highlight like these spare pathways or whatever, right? So it's like, if they get the map, they can see the better options for like shortcuts and stuff like that. Hey, that would work really well, actually. Oh, excuse me. My goodness. Apparently, I'm going to need a siesta here today. My energy levels are low. Um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So, on to the next one here. Uh, okay, number five. Um, so, this is for room six here. The danger is going to be a trap here. So this one will probably be, you know, like I say, a, a landslide or something like that. And it'd be fun, too, because, like, you can do it and be like, if they fail, not only do they take some damage, but they get knocked back down to room 9 or whatever. And they have to then figure out, like, okay, now what do we do? Do we try and go back up the way we came? Do we try and find a new path? How do we handle this? Right? Um, I think that's kind of a fun way, a fun, a fun thing to, to have in there. So we can do that. And then it's also going to have the health potions here. So we're going to say health there. Because it'll have like potions that might include health or, or different fitness buffs. You know, we can add. This is a great situation where we could put in like two potions of climbing, right? So it's like two players you know, out of a group of four or five or whatever can have that easy time climbing. And so then it can kind of become a fun strategy game mechanic type thing for players to have to figure out like okay do we um uh do we sorry my phone is doing things at me <laughs> yeah so and then it becomes a, a process for players to figure out like do we who do we give it to do we want to use it now do we save it for later you know that it'll be good it'll be good um so room number seven here. Uh, so at this point, gosh dang, my nose is doing its stupid thing where it just itches all day for no reason. I hate when it does this. I don't know why my nose does it. Because it's not like inside. It's like the, the, the skin around the outside of my nose. It's like the tip of my nose. It just itches. And I can never figure out why. It's like right here on the top of it. Right? It's like right up here. It's not around the nostrils or anything. It's just right here. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, room seven. We're on to a D4 here. Uh, the danger there is going to be an easy battle. Um, easy uh, battle. Um, check that off. And then the, uh, the reward in that one is going to be money. Seven will be our money room, which players will love that. Players love money. They love getting money. They love being able to buy rad shit in town. So give them good money and they'll be happy. All right, so money there. Uh, so on to room eight. Uh, so that's going to be medium difficulty battle. Hold on a second. I might I marked something off wrong. I must have marked something off wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I absolutely checked something off wrong, but what did I check off wrong? have one medium battle. Oh, I accidentally checked off an extra medium battle. That's what I did. Somewhere along the lines. Right? Did I do that? Or did I just roll? Oh my god, what did I do wrong? I did, the, I wrote down on uh, just a little post-it note <laughs> all the stuff that's supposed to be in this dungeon so that way as I'm going I could check them off once I add them so I don't try to do it again except that I accidentally checked off something extra and I don't know what I did I don't know which one I did one medium battle one hard battle one two okay yeah no I was right I was right I did one extra 
of the medium battle. So we've only got one on there, and we just rolled an easy battle, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. I figured it out. I figured it out. <sighs> easy, easy battle. Easy battle. Oops. Go over there. Come out there. There we go. Um, and then for the reward... Choose. This is room number eight. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that couldn't that that couldn't have gone more perfectly. So that's got a key as a reward. So in that first room, they'll be able to find one of the you know, they'll be able to find like a grappling hook to be able to climb up and use it to get into um, one of the one of the rooms. Um, hold on, actually, and that's one thing I need to do here. Safe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say need. Um, key for that one because the map room is supposed to need a key and so is the compass room but we haven't designated the compass room quite yet but now we know so the map um hold on a second so the map is in room five which is right there but we have a key so we've got one key and then where's the other key where was the other key the other key is room one so if we then just make sure that the compass if we we might just go ahead and because we've got uh the compass and the enchantment token are the two rewards left. So if we just sort of take charge of fate and put the compass as the reward in room 10, then we've got all of our keys and boss keys in the order that we need them to be in for it to make sense. So we do that. Um, so that's room number 10. And then up there is room number 9. And then in this one, we're going to make the reward the enchantment token. Token. There we go. There we go. And so now we just got to decide. Okay, so. Um, all right. And so now we just got to decide which of these rooms will have a medium battle and which one will have a hard battle as the challenge. All right. So uh, it looks like it's going to be room 9 will have the medium battle and 10 will have the hard battle. In battle and then this one we put in the hard battle there we go there we go all right so that one's all divvy done and just because of how time consuming the process of divvying it all up is and since we've got the dice out and everything i want to go ahead and divvy up all of the things for uh the upper level as well so we're going to go upper level here um let's see here Sorry, phone, phone is doing things at me again. And I just gotta see what that's about. Okay, nope, that's not anything important. Okay, my bad, my bad. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, let's go ahead and set up our uh, rewards and dangers here for the next area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, we start it again. Put the D4 away and let's grab ourselves a D2 out over here. Alright, let's see what we got for room number one up here. Uh, oh, that's so. Room number one is gonna have an easy battle for our danger. Are we gonna do? Are we doing the thing where we're not gonna have a cursor anymore? Is that what we're doing now? Are we are we freezing up? Oh, there we go. Now it's now it's behaving again. I don't know why it does that sometimes. It really makes sense to me. All right. Anyway, uh, so we've got an easy battle. Scrape that off our list now. And the reward is going to be... Oh, there we go. Well, we'll get the boss key right off the bat. And so now here's where I have to decide. Uh, am I going to make the keys different in some way, shape, or form for the next level? Um, can be kind of one of the challenging things to figure out. And when you have something like this where it's like not legitimate keys. And the concept is that the key is like... A universal thing that could be used to handle a universal problem like a grappling hook to climb up a steep ledge <laughs> you 
You know, because, like, for keys, it's easy. It's just, like, a one key is... Like, each key is a one-time use or whatever. But in this situation, you can't really do that. So are we going to have the keys be different than in that first one? You almost want to. Otherwise, they can just reuse the keys they already found, and it defeats the purpose of trying to find the keys. But even then, do I care? Is that a problem? Right? Especially if we're going to make things pretty linear for them so that they're going to have to follow the same pathway anyway and they're still going to be largely interacting with all the same stuff. So I'm going to ponder that one a little bit. And the good news is we don't have to decide that one right now. Um, or really until we get to the point where we're actually describing all the details for each room in this dungeon, which won't be for a while because we're going to start on level 1 once we get to that point. So I have all the time in the world to stave off making that decision. All right, let's roll up our second room here. Second room is going to be... It's going to have a difficult battle. So, hard battle, and the reward will be... One, two, three, four, five, six. The reward in that one will be money. there. Okay, perfect. So now this one, room three, is going to have that's going to switch to a D8 here, just so we're not doing a whole bunch of silly, pointless dice rolls. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be a trap room. Alright. I think, right? Yeah, three can be the trap room. Four is the one that's going to have the boss battle in it. Um, we're going we're gonna to control, we're going to take charge of fate in that situation. Um, but this one can have the trap in it. And then for a reward in this one. One, two, three, four, five. That'll be the enchantment token. All right. Interesting. <laughs> I say interesting as if there was like a conscious decision by fate. <laughs> enchantment token. All right. So room number four, like I say, we're going to control, we're going to take charge of fate, and we're going to say that one's got the boss battle there, because I actually think that'd be really fun to make that one be the, the boss battle that has the griffin nest, and so they have to battle the griffin. Um, I think mean, that just ends up working out really well. I think that's a, I, I, I'm actually kind of excited about making that the boss battle. I think there's going to be some interesting dynamics involved in that for players to have to figure out. Um, and then the reward for that one... Let's see here. <laughs> the reward for that one, uh, the dice have decided that this is the empty room, which actually is kind of perfect because the reward for that one is they're at the end of the they're at the end of the dungeon. So, boss battle need boss key. I want to make that note there so I remember what I'm filling out. And actually, that reminds me, I didn't um, for our compass. I need to put need key here just so I can remember to put those details in the description here. Need key, need boss key. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we got that. All right, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. <laughs> everyone is super concerned. I know everyone is super concerned that I wasn't going to get it, but I got it. All, like, nobody watching right now. It's perfect. <laughs> All right, room number, so room number five is going to have uh, an easy battle in it. Perfect will be easy battle all right and then the reward here is going to be uh, the map and that's that actually probably will be okay because that's not actually for a few rooms down if the players are going in order here so map which means that in this one we're just gonna put down need key because it's always the map and the compass that need our regular keys. Alright, so then that brings us to room 6 here. Oops. Uh, so our danger here is going to be the easy battle. Our only remaining easy battle. All right. Easy battle. And then our reward. Room 6. So that one's a little ways down. 
Uh, um, that one's going to have our health slash uh, buff items uh, room. So health. So we'll just give them some potions or something like that. Uh, number seven. Number seven. All right. And at this point in time, we're going over to our D4. D4, do you say anything? <laughs> so funny. All right. Uh, so this is going to be, so this is room seven. Seven is going to be our safe room. It's actually kind of nice. They've got a good room that they can establish a, or sit down for a long rest right before getting towards the, you know, right, pretty much right before getting to the boss. That actually works out well. Um, so that's safe. And then the reward here um, is going to be an item. That works out really well. Item. All right. Room numeral eight. So eight, ten, eight, nine, and ten are our remaining rooms. Um, wait, hold on. Let me see here. We still need to put the compass somewhere, right? And we know we've got. We know we've got the map. Which room had the map? Room five had the map. So we'll want. So we kind of need to make sure that eight has a key the way it's been done. So we're going to make, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take charge of fate. Um, we're going to make that one have the key. I think we actually kind of have to take charge of fate with all of them just to make sure everything works out okay, at least as far as the rewards go. So key for the reward. Um, and then nine will need to have a key because then 10 will have the compass there. Um, so that one will be a key. So here knocking, and at first I think, is there someone at my door? And then I look over and look out my window, and there's a woodpecker. <laughs> there's a woodpecker on uh, the tree right outside of my apartment, <laughs> just pecking, pecking, pecking away. I I absolutely love that I live in an apartment that has quote-unquote wildlife, I'm not going to say like full-blown wildlife, it's not like I'm out in, you know, the deep woods where there's like foxes and wolves come up, but like, you know, I get like birds and stuff, and like there's a little wooded area that we, you know, we get a little bit of greenery and wildlife coming around here, so there's, I know there's a resident owl um, in these woods around my apartment, um, every once in a while I'll wake up to him giving a call. He'll even actually call out in the day sometimes. Um, it's been a it's been a week or two since I've heard him, but um, yeah, around this time of year he starts getting a little active and starts uh, start, starts hooting away, hooting and hollering at all. I, I, I'm assuming it's a he in there, and he's hooting and hollering at the lady he's trying to get attention, which is just the rudest way to go about it, honestly. If you ask me, I don't know what his deal is, but <laughs> all right, roommate is going to have, this is going to be our puzzle room, which means with what we have left, actually this works out really well, um, actually it's not that it works out really well, it's just easy, um, the other ones will have our medium battles because those are the only ones we haven't used up yet, so we'll do medium battle, and then this one we know we need to keep, we know we need to keep, so there we go, okay. So now everything's kind of organized. We know what to put in each room. And so now it's just a matter of describing it and, and filling it out. You know, we've kind of already gone through, like, this is why I like to have my templates and everything. And why I think through what each dungeon should have and everything. And why I then now puzzle through it. Because now, like, the, the most time-consuming part tends to be writing. But it's, the, the it tends to be like, it, when I say writing, like, the actual writing out descriptions of everything of what players find um, you know what enemies are doing what a place looks like adding all those just like actual descriptions tends to be one of the more time-consuming components of the whole process um, and so now as we're gonna start doing all of that we don't have to also be spending brain power trying to think about like oh wait does it fit for this room to have this that or the other thing it's like we've already thought about that we've got our notes there so now we just we really just need to sit down and you know, it's like, it's like at this point in time, 
you know, it's like when you're building a house, you don't want to paint the walls first because then if you accidentally put the wrong piece of drywall in the wrong room or whatever, and then all of a sudden the paint's all wrong, you got to redo that too. But in this situation, we've like numbered all the drywall pieces, put them all up in place, right? And so now we can just paint each room as needed and we know everything else is right where it needs to be. So it's perfect. It's perfect to do it this way. Well, yeah, my way is perfect. Anyone else's way is imperfect. No, that's not at all true. Not at all true. Not, no, no parts of that statement are true. But it is a good way to do it. And it's a way that uh, consistently works for me. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Look at me. I'm just refreshing my beverage for myself. All right. What time is it right now? Well, it's only 12.40. How about that? We still got a lot of time to make some progress. We're making some good progress today. Um, and I think that's cool. All right. So let's, uh, yeah, let's work on room set number one here, our lower level rooms. So room one, this one has, uh, yeah, we're already on the lower level. Okay, so room one is our medium battle and it has a key in it. So what we'll do, we'll get our usual bullet points going on here. Medium battle, so I always do that so I know what it is, but then we'll describe it. Um, uh, I don't know what that's you let's let's go ahead and just really quickly figure out what monsters we want to do so a medium battle on this level here we're gonna switch back to doing it this way and bouncing back and forth um, just that way we can like kind of drag this and move it around here it's a bit easier to handle everything that way and then once we're actually filling out put, like putting stuff in our map um, we have more screen real estate to work with, um, which is always a good thing. So, all right, so uh, medium battle will have 155 experience points here. Um, so, Ian, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to take that, take that, um, and I'm just going to put that down there and carry it down so that way I can easily see it all too. Little little tips and tricks to make things a bit more streamlined. So we got to come up with 155 experience points. Um, we could go with. I mean, we could basically do three of the young griffins and then maybe like three of the small young griffins and then throw one of the tiny ones in there. So it's a little extra in the XP, but it's better to provide more XP than they need than not enough. So let's do it that way. Let's do. Uh, young. Actually, no. I'm gonna save myself a bit of typing time here. Oh, wait, no. If it's gonna be th it's three of these ones, and then one of these ones. Oh, come here. There you go. Copy that. Paste that. Alrighty, um, so we got that. So that's what it's going to be. Um, so as you as you come over, uh, as you come over the crest of this steep bit of mountain pass, you find yourselves looking at another. Another plateau um, within these foothills. Um, the stony ground matches the rest of your surroundings. Um, it is yet another indistinguishable. Distinguish. Uh, boy, I get that one right. There we go. Then another indistinguishable uh, piece of of ground among the well, among among these mountainous foothills. 
Boom. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, a romping around on this platform are four small griffins apparently playing with one another. Uh, eh, let's see. The griffins notice your approach and uh, immediately uh, take defensive postures ready uh, to fend off uh, <laughs> ready to fend off their visitors boom do it like that so it's like that's a fun one too because it'll make players kind of wonder about like oh should we try and kill these babies or what's the deal here because the thing is too is like with the griffins and everything being capable of having flight you know even though they're young on the mountains I think it'd be really interesting to offer dynamics of like they'll try to w run away from the fight pretty early but maybe they'll struggle because they're not great flyers yet <laughs> you know something like that I think would be an interesting dynamic to add uh, to it all so that'll be fun that'll be fun I like that I like that I like that all right um, and so now we need to have a key in here so key um, uh, lying on the ground looking somewhat tattered and tossed about is a grappling hook with uh, we'll say approximately 20 feet of rope attached not, not attacked sorry attached <laughs> uh, this looks like it would be handy when trying to climb steep slopes or mountain sides boom so it's like there's their clue that like hey this could be pretty handy for some parts of this area and so there we go okay so now okay let's close that out let's grab that let's nope let's full screen you there we go all right so that's room num numero numero one oh is that offensive? Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> All right. Um. Gosh, dang it, my nose. I hate when it does this. I don't know. I've I've yet to figure out a consistent pattern of when my the outside of my nose itches. It just sort of does some days, and it bothers me. <laughs> All right. Uh. So we want to go to our objects tool. Um. To think about how we're gonna do this one we're definitely gonna have a lot of stones do we have like just like a stone that you storage structure table no oh we do have rock there we go I mean I feel like that's what most of the decoration here is gonna be just lots of rocks kind of tossed about here right I think we can just do and so this one, I actually want to do the scatter tool. I want to unsnap it. Come over here to, again, where's the, where'd that rock go? Yeah, so it's like you can put like a rock there. Grab one of these, do like a couple rocks like that. And some of these. And some of these. No, see, that, that looks... It looks too sloppy the way I have it there. Honestly, if they're going to be plateaus, I think the best thing to do is to just do, like, very, like, specifically placed bits of rock and stone. You know what I mean? Like, if we do... If it's too random, then it just kind of actually ends up looking weird in this situation. So I actually think we're going to go ahead and just keep our standard item tool here so that way I can be in control of like the the angles and everything right so we can do that I think that's gonna work much better there 
Um, sorry, hold on a second. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. My apologies. All right. Um, yeah, like we can just do little rocks like this. Um, and then we can just add. Let me see here. Let me just go to all so we can search um, rope. Yeah, so then we can just kind of have that lying there, kind of like we described. So like, that's their grappling hook that they were looking for. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So yeah, you just do something like that. Um, and honestly, like that's fine. This is this is a map where it's actually probably okay for things to be kind of dull and monotonous. Like this is a mountainous pass. It's not going to be super duper cool and amazing. Um, oh my goodness, and I just figured out exactly how we'll offer up their safe rooms that they can fortify. Some of these rooms will have like a little cave entrance right along the walls that like are where it like it goes uphill and so there's almost like a wall or a cliffside or something there's going to be a small cave that they can crawl into and and be safe that's that's what we'll do that's how we'll do it boom figured it out figured it out i adore it all right um <laughs> sorry anyway okay i mean i think that's all i think that's all we need there so now room number two will have a, a hard battle. Uh, so let's do underline hard battle. Alright. Uh, what time is it? Okay, yeah. So the hard battle in this situation on this one is gonna have 230 experience points. So we could have that one have four of the young griffins and three, the four of the small ones and three of the tiny ones. I think that would actually work pretty well. Four uh, X of these little guys. Hi, Kitty. I see you over there. Yeah, you gotta come in. See, now you look like you're in the mood to sit right in front of my thing. Oh no, you want to sit on the lap? Okay, that's perfectly fine. Hi, sweetie. Yeah, I'm just gonna put your tail right in the microphone. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> You're such a turd. Love you to bits, cat, but my goodness. My goodness. Alright, uh, three um, of these guys, or no, of these ones right here to make our remaining 30 experience points that we need. That. And then paste that. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so room two. Uh, room two. Let me make sure I'm thinking about. Yeah. So room two is going to be this one right here. So. Uh, so we'll say. Just up the hill, from the plateau. Below is another flat segment of hill. Uh, let's see here. How do I want to describe this? So I'm basically just going to describe it as in like there's a whole bunch of like baby griffins just hanging out around here. Um, and there's even more here than there were below. Um, uh, another large group of. Um, younger looking griffins uh, occupies this area. Some are lounging and napping while others alt <laughs> we'll say alternate between playing and preening uh, yeah, we'll just say alternate between playing and preening. Uh, upon seeing 
uh, the newcomers, the, the new, oops, newcomers, there we go. I know, kitty. So upon seeing the newcomers, the, uh, the griffins, cat, okay, your tail is smacking me in the face now. <laughs> enough, enough! <laughs> upon seeing the newcomers, the griffins, um, uh, the griffins, uh, cease all activity and watch you warily, ready to fight you off if necessary. Let's do it like that way. So we're just gonna like constantly put it, put the ball in the player's court to figure out how they want to handle this. Do they want to kill a bunch of baby griffins or not? Right, like that's gonna be the decision that they have to make. <laughs> And then the reward here, though, is the boss key. So, boss key. Um, uh, lying among... Uh, let's see. Uh, lying among a pile of... <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, we'll say... A pile of rubble that appears to have once been the entrance to a cave is a pack. A little work the pack can be extracted from the rocks along with a very large maybe even giant <laughs> uh is gonna be kind of like barbaric uh, very large uh, skeleton arm <laughs> inside the pack is a set of crampons that appear to be designed to aid in navigating steep or vertical rock uh, walls. Boom. So the way it's like, okay, it's clear that these things are going to assist in your ability to climb up a rock wall. So when they get to a point where it's like, oh yeah, no, there's just like a straight up rock wall here. The players know that at least one of them should probably do that and then like can just like use rope to help pull up the rest of them or something like that. So perfect. There we go. Um, now we now we actually we want to decorate it here. So what we can do is let's see here. Well, let's go. Actually, let's go back to just over here. Let's just go to the rock one. There we go. And like let's just add like a whole bunch of. Actually, I don't want to do it that big because I want it to. Um, undo that I want it like a smaller like almost like that if it didn't have those extra two there I mean I guess I can just do like here we go here we go this will work we'll do that and then just sort of like put in some individual things them. Uh, oops. There we go. Da, 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 da. Sorry. Constantly multitasking in my life. Always, always, always. It's just the way it goes for me. But it's okay. It keeps me it keeps me productive and it keeps me working on a lot of things. Um, and feeling like I'm accomplishing everything that I wanted to accomplish in my life. So, I don't mind multitasking. I don't mind that I have to take pauses oftentimes but yeah so like if we do stuff like this right just add maybe a couple extra random stones like coming coming out from there so we do that and then if we do hold on I think they have sack right and then we can just like make sure that's under and just do like the sack like right there 
And they can pull that out with a skeletal arm. Because the idea that I had is it's actually like a backpack. What if they have like a backpack thing actually? Let me check here. Let me just do pack. Yeah, they really don't have a backpack. That's what I'm thinking. It's like a backpack type of pack. And like, you can pull it out and one of the arms, one of the skeletal arms gets brought out with it or something like that. <laughs> Alright, so we've got that part there, and then let's go back to our, no, no, let's just go back to our rocks here. There's still so many other different rocks that we can use. There's the rock. All right, we can kind of put this like right there or something, All right, do that. Actually, I want to put these this over now. Um, do one right there. I put like one right there. The fun part about putting rocks like this is these can end up being like interesting, interesting bits of complexity that get added to like, you know, they, they, they add to the, uh, to the battlefield and can kind of help give cover and stuff like that for players in the middle of trying to fight all these, uh, these griffins and everything so I think that's actually gonna be the fun part about this so if we put that there that looks actually pretty good honestly like I say it is just not there's not a lot of room for a whole lot of like really dense clustered up complex maps like this this area is really meant to be just sort of like a barren hillside type of environment um, it's kind of how I like it so there we go. So that's perfect. Uh, on to our next room, I guess. Okay, right, so room three. So this is the puzzle room. So I gotta somehow figure out what a puzzle is gonna be. What am I making? Edwin, hey, how's it going? Uh, we're making a dungeon that is a... I can pull up and we can kind of zoom out a little bit so you can see. A dungeon. That's not actually a dungeon. It's a mountain pass. And we're just kind of designing it like a, we're using our dungeon format. But it's not like a dungeon in the sense of going here, there's locked doors and all that kind of stuff. It's more so, you know, it's a it's a mountainous, like a, a mountain foothills pass that's going to take some doing for them to navigate their way through. It's not just a standard like, yep, you travel for a day. It's like this is meant to be a more treacherous area. And so we're, pr the primary enemies that they see around here is this, areas like infested with griffins and it's like the final boss is going to be mama griffin who's going to be pissed off that players have been killing all of her babies <laughs> assuming that players choose to do that i always give my players freedom if they decide they want to find some way to not kill all of the enemies around and then they can <laughs> they can avoid that um you know if they're skilled enough and clever enough to do it um but yeah that's what we're working on here and so it's got a couple different levels um we're working on the lower level of it, um, but there are uh, there are multiple levels to it. So we're just kind of plugging away at it, just chugging away and, and getting stuff down. We've kind of organized already. We know what's in these rooms, so now we're at this point in time pretty much just putting in the details, adding the flavor, adding a bit of design and interest to our map, you know, adding some stones so that way ro rooms that have combat in them are a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more uh, uh, complex, I guess, is the way I'm trying to describe it. So you can like hide behind a rock or something like that. So that's what that's what we're working on here, um, and it's it's kind of a fun one. It's been a fun one to kind of think through and puzzle through to try and figure out how you can add your like standard locked door mechanisms when you are creating something that doesn't actually have a door in it. You know, there's no doors. You're not just going to have a random-ass door sitting there in the middle of a mountain pass. It makes no sense. Maybe to get inside to, like, the, the you know, the underground dwarven areas, but that's not what this uh, one is meant to accomplish. They're, the, the mountain pass is them trying to uh, make their way, try and sort of, like, make their way to a... a a tribe of giants that are known to not be at least immediately violent to non-giant creatures. So that's like, that's kind of what we're working on right now. So, 
Yeah, and so we're, we're on to room number three here, which sort of the dice have decreed is going to have a puzzle in it. Um, but boy, if, uh, hell of hell of a puzzle. I'll be I'll be damned if I know exactly what a good puzzle is going to be just in the middle of a mountain. I'm wondering if thinking in this situation a good puzzle is going to be that they can clearly see the next bit of the past, like the next pathway, but it's blocked by rocks, and so the puzzle is just them figuring out how to circumvent that. Do they try to climb over this? unstable pile of rocks that might give way underneath them do they try and remove the rocks and for all of it it's like if they fail you know does like what's the result if it fails oh excuse me didn't do that so i always got to think about that uh, let's see what do you got for me first campaigns of dnd i played many years ago learn the lesson to not tie your horse at the base of a griffin mount oh no <laughs> try try Baby girlfriend. Oh my god, that sounds like a, just a series of mistakes right there. <laughs> and swoop down to eat your horses. <laughs> my goodness. That's, see, but that's like, to me, that's like, that's the sign of an attentive DM there. Like, they were aware of the whole situation. <laughs> and, uh, let you make your decisions, but then you had to lie in the bed that you made. I, I think that's a great story. I love that. Because that's the thing, too. Even as a player, I would think that was hilarious. I would love that. I would love that if my DM did that to us. And had it be that, you know, what we thought was going to be our way back ended up being nothing at all because of our own lack of foresight. Like, that's the type of stuff, and that's the type of stuff that I really love about D&D. Because you can try and get creative when you're trying to problem solve, but it also means that the world that you're in can be creative back at you, right? Like, video games are... I, I mean, I love video games. I play video games all the time. But one of the drawbacks is the game can't... There's only so much creativity the game can throw back at you, right? There's After a certain point, you know what the game is going to do to, like, punish you for situations or trying to be creative, right? And so it's like it kind of becomes a situation where it's like a lot of games where if you've played them enough, you understand what is going to happen next. And it kind of takes out that mystery, that sort of sense of it being ad-libbed. But in D&D, &D, because you have a person who's being the computer and they are just as capable of using their imagination as you are as a player, then it just like, it just makes sure that like even as a player things are fun and exciting, you know, and as a DM, things are fun and exciting because players will be creative and then you can be creative back and you can like, I don't know, you can just like add punishments to the players for those. And the flip side is you can add rewards too if they do something really well. Like if they think about everything, then, you know, they can, you can reward them appropriately. So I don't know. I love it. I love that story and I love all kinds of stuff. <laughs> kind of stuff that stays with you. Oh wow, yeah, you've been playing some you've been playing for a few years then, no kidding. <laughs> your griffin immediately goes to don't park your horses at the base of a griffin mountain. Man, nickel every time nickel every time I had to remember that life lesson. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I feel like I feel like everyone who plays D D kind of has those memories. Um started second okay, nice. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I that was before my time. Um, that was before my time, but I actually do have a collection of, like, really old, like, original old-school advanced D&D &D booklets, you know, from back in the day. I've got those, and I'll be damned if those aren't fun adventures to read through. Because it was, like, that was back in the day when the approach to D&D &D was different, right? It's different than it is nowadays, and that's, and I don't know that I would necessarily say one is better than the other. I think that, I think that it's interesting to see how games evolve and I think it's fun to dip back into the old school approach to things but like you read those those documents and stuff and it was definitely much more dungeon crawly whereas you know the modern the modern iteration of D&D &D is a much more storytelling focused thing um, and it's just it's really interesting to see how they've how, how the game has has evolved over time and I think that's one of my favorite parts about you know, trying to whenever I can at like a 
at like a, a garage sale or whatever, snap up those types of old school books that that some people still have. You know, it's it's just it's really interesting to see those things and just sort of see the progression of the game. Uh oh yeah, competitive D and D. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean like they still kinda of try and do that, right? With like the Adventures League and stuff like that, but even then it's it's different, right? Like you I guess I wouldn't describe it as as competitive. So it's like yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's fascinating. I love I love hearing stories about that. And just like in general, regardless of what edition you started with, I love hearing people's stories that to them and their friends um, are like the iconic stories for for their, you know, lifetime of playing D&D and stuff like that. You know, like I can still think about really amusing anecdotes of back of like the first D and D campaign I was part of or the first time, you know, a lot of it like one of the first uh tabletops I ever played was Call of Cthulhu. I played that one in college. That was one of the first ones I played with people. Um and so I've got so many memories that to me are just like such standout memories from doing that that were just like lessons about how to approach a tabletop RPG in general, even though it was different than D and D and stuff. So yeah, no, it's uh I love that stuff. I love that stuff and I love like honestly, some of the best stories come from when you as players or you as the DM like fuck up, right? You know, like that's when that's where some of the best stories come from because those are the ones that stand out in your mind and that's when you really got to get creative to, you know, find a solution and figure something out. So, it's just I don't know, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um and you better believe if my players just leave a bunch of horses at the mountain pass, you better believe they are not going to find those horses again. Especially since this pass, like, they're trying to go through it. Not, like, go in there and then come back down. I mean, eventually they'll come back down, but their their destination is on the other side of this pass. So it's like if they leave horses at the beginning of it, then, whoo, boy, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be They're going to be sad about that, that's for sure. Let's see our backs then it's time to go on a dungeon for the con. Score on escaping the dungeon alive and the amount of loot you manage to take with you. Groups would play the same dungeon and the ones with the most points at the end of the day would get a prize. That's awesome. That actually sounds like it would be so much fun. That 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 sounds like it'd be so much fun. My hope is that I'm really hoping that, you know, we kinda missed the window for it this summer too. Depending on your locale, you might have had the chance. In my location, some things are opening up post-pandemic. You know, like smaller group activities are um, are pretty like acceptable and stuff. Um, again, uh, but like bigger things like conventions still aren't really happening. They're having some of the outdoor conventions, but they canceled our local indoor gaming convention. Um, which was a bummer because I know they do a lot of stuff like that and I haven't really been able to properly experience it yet because I moved to my city like pretty much immediately before COVID hit so I didn't really know anyone the first year I was here when they did have the con so I just kind of showed up and enjoyed some of the booths and stuff rather than any of the activities because they had a bunch of game rooms and stuff going on and now that I've made friends and found people that I like to hang out with I really want to go to that convention with them but they haven't had it. They haven't been able to have it. It's been two years in a row. They've had to cancel it. So, it's uh, it's been a bummer. But that that just that concept of like a competition on who can do it the best is like super interesting to me. Super interesting to me. And that sounds like it'd be so much fun. That sounds like it'd be so much fun. Uh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I just love D and D in general and tabletops in general. Um, that's all just fun stuff. So, I don't know. I don't know. My that's just my take on it. But what the hell was I doing? I'm supposed to be writing here. I'm like the worst streamer. It's like he said he was gonna be writing. He's just sitting there talking about stories, being a nerd. <laughs> well, I'm watching this. <laughs> All right, let's see here for a puzzle. Yeah, I think it's tough to come up with a good puzzle because usually puzzles are something that's like designed by someone for players to have to figure out but in a natural setting like just a mountain pass how do you add a puzzle and so I think I'm going to just have the puzzle be um uh, let's see here so uh, ass as, as you as you survey the pla the plateau around you uh you notice what appears to have 
once been the next part of this passage. Unfortunately, fortunately, it is uh, blocked by um, the remnants. Uh, wow, rem remnants of a cave in. Um, though it appears that you could climb over or even remove the rocks it also let's see it also appears that disturb that disturb disturbing them uh, could result in further rock slides and you just leave it at that and let them figure it out and there's there's our puzzle simple as that Simple as that. And so there's no reward here. So we're just going to actually what we'll do. This is the room that doesn't have a reward. So we'll just put uh, uh, empty here. And we will do um, empty. And then say uh, there's. Let's see. And just this is just a note for the DM really. There's nothing here. Suck it players. Hehe. <laughs> I don't try to be too adversarial with my players, but I do like to screw with them from time to time. So when I get the chance to say suck it to them, I do. <laughs> All right. Um, so the, one of the things I've been checking my phone with periodically throughout this whole stream uh, is I have, I have uh, f f my family has been texting me incessantly. And uh, though from what I can glance at, there's no emergency going on. Uh, I get the sense that I should probably call people. It sounds like they're trying to coordinate and plan uh, some family plans that were potentially happening this weekend. So I am going to cut off the stream just a little bit early here, um, just like 10 minutes early. We're going to we're gonna cut off a little early here. Um, so I apologize about that, but you know how it is. Sometimes you got to take care of family stuff. Um, so, so that's what's going to happen. Um, I will be back. I will be back whenever that's all taken care of. I will be back for my uh, video game streaming this afternoon as well. Uh, continuing our run through of Mass Effect 3. So if that's anything that you're interested in, check back in a little bit. I will be on streaming that. Um, if not, if you're just here for the D&D stuff, then by all means, don't come back for Mass Effect. It's it's definitely it's decidedly not D&D. <laughs> you know, if you're looking for D&D stuff, there's a whole bunch of other awesome streamers uh, that are probably going right now. So check those out. Um, either way, though, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. Appreciate everyone who stops by, whether whether you're watching live, watching the VODs, either way, I appreciate all of you. Um, there, I do keep the VODs up on Twitch, and I do have my YouTube channel that has as disorganized and chaotic as it is on my YouTube channel because I don't really have time to maintain it properly. I do make sure my VODs end up there, so if you want to go back and see any of the other stuff I'm working on, by all means, you can go and try and wade your way through that crap. It's there. Um, I also have the Discord channel up. Um, you can, or the Discord server, you can go ahead and find that on my Twitch channel if you want to be, if you want to join our small but growing community of people who like to share homebrew stuff and discuss different character ideas, different, you know, homebrew ideas, different things they're working on, people like to share maps and stuff. If that sounds like a fun uh, community to you, by all means sign up for that, we'll get you verified so you can join us all for that. Um, and again, if not, no, no worries, um, I will not be offended by that, but... Uh, those are my plugs, um, and we're heading into the weekend. May or may not stream this weekend. I don't know. I guess we'll see what uh, kind of family stuff we've got coordinated. Uh, I might stream this weekend. If not, um, I will be back on Monday. As far as I know, there's nothing that's going to get in the way of me streaming on Monday. So we'll be back the same time to do more streaming then, where we will continue to work on this dungeon and, you know, our just our campaign at large. Um, but, yeah, thanks again for stopping by. Appreciate each and every one of you. If you're going to stick around for... Video gaming, I'll see you in a little bit. If not, then I will see you definitely Monday, if not this weekend. Um, take care of yourselves until then, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to streaming for you again. So, um, yeah, all right, that, that's all I got. So I guess, I, I, I guess it's goodbye. It, well, it's see you later. It's not goodbye forever. But at this point, I'm babbling, so I'm just going to cut it off. Okay, bye.